What are you doing everyone? Welcome to uh, the latest upload right here on the Fishing Life channel. This, as you probably already know if you're a subscriber, that this is very much a fishing vlog channel, rough and ready. I'm currently here in Enniskilling. I'm here competing in the Mahons Festival. It's a five day festival. We're actually fishing right the way through Monday through to Friday and we will be rotating through different sections. I just thought this would be a nice check-in with you. I am filming this week as one full length film and that will be uploaded to the Catch Fishing channel right here on YouTube. And that is obviously gonna be the full story of how the week has gone. So it's Monday, Monday morning. I'm here at Round O section. This is it's the heart of Enniskilling. Lots of you may be familiar with it. That's the main bridge over there. That goes over to Old Sligo Road and Broad Meadow, which I'm sure lots of you are familiar with. Now, I'm in a section here today. There are just four anglers here. I've got Andy Leathers on my left. Um, I'm a peg three, and then there are two more anglers down to my right. It's a very interesting swim, and that's really why I want to show you this. Obviously, you're going to be seeing the full film um, next week, but I wanted to show you this because this is kind of it's a different kind of peg from a lot of the pegs that you might have seen in um, in lots of my videos and just purely because there's several different options here now I will warn you it fished quite hard yesterday very hard just a week ago it was fishing really well however yesterday for some reason the whole system almost just kind of shut down it fished incredibly hard and I think this section was only one with about three or four kilo but I'll show you the peg because this there's quite a few different varieties in, in this swim, so uh, I just thought you might find it of interest. So, just so you know where we are, that is the bridge there that goes to Old Sligo Road and Broad Meadows down there as well. All right, and this is where it goes around a big bend. Now the river is actually flowing very, very slowly. There's hardly any flow to speak of and it's going from right to left. And that goes round to a bit of a marina where the boats are there. Okay, and that's Andy, Andy Leather there. Uh, that is an end peg, but it's not, you know, by any means noted as far as I, I'm, you know, I'm led to believe. So here is my swim. So those river anglers amongst you will probably know already and probably might be thinking about um, one issue that we've got. And that basically is that the river is flowing from right to left. So the river is flowing around here. And as you can see, I'm actually on an inside bend here. So that obviously would suggest and is the case that the flow is right over there. It's well over halfway. So the, the very little flow that we have actually got is over halfway over there. All right, so that inevitably means, not always the case, but it certainly is on this case, that the water close in, i.e. on a pole line, is actually, and the toe is actually going to the right. So we've got kind of a double scenario there. Now, as you can probably tell, or maybe as would have guessed, I haven't got a pole set up. I decided not to bring the pole on this competition. I have got float fishing gear. I've got wagglers with me and sticks. However, this peg, as far as I, you know, understand and, and, and feel that it's really not suited for that sort of rod and line float fishing. So it's all about the feeder for me today. Now, I'll quickly talk you through the approach. As you can expect, just about every angler is going to have a pole up and he's spending a lot of time getting his pole gear right. He's got a lot of depth on that 30 metre line. I think he says it's almost a top six deep. That's how deep it is on 13 metres. So there's lots of water to have a go at. But my approach is, it's gonna be quite simple, but quite flexible. Now, as regards to the actual kit, I mean, I'll quickly show you this. You will see it all in the film, but just so it give you an idea, a taste of what, what it is we're doing over here and how we're kind of fishing. Um, worms, as you'd expect, there's just over two kilo in there. Obviously, that's way too much for, for a day, especially where the weight's fishing, but it means I've got it, you know, just in case it is a red letter day. All right, that is what I'll be using on my side tray. The bait bag, casters. All right, so there's two pints there, another two pints there. When we're coming over here, we, I always like to carry four pints with me at least, just to make sure in case you are on a great peg. I've actually got extra here, as you can see, and that's basically because these were left over from yesterday. Okay, so I can obviously, you know, if I use that lot today, then I've absolutely emptied it. But it means that, you know, I've always got some to carry over for the next day in case I do draw on a great peg. Other aspects of the bait bag for you, red worms. All right, can be fantastic on the hook, as we all know. So there are some really nice red worms. And in there are basically maggots, live maggots, which I'm strongly suspecting I'll only really use on the hook. All right, and then in here as well. I am actually gonna be feeding some hemp today. You know, they have been catching roach. 
it wasn't fantastic yesterday but prior to that there were lots of roach there and on my shorter line i am actually going to be putting some hemp in because i know lots of the pole anglers do that in there is a good selection of catapults however with the flow that we've got here i don't really feel as though loose feeding is going to be right on that short line um, and that really is it it is a bank holiday and as you can expect we're going to be having lots of boaters and things you know but it is a bank holiday monday so it is expected and i think they're going to play quite an important role because the boats going that way stay on that long line or the other side on the right hand side whereas the boats coming this way are going to be coming quite close in and that's because we're on a bend here so they're going to be coming on the racing line if you want to call it that up this inside so that could be quite it, I don't know. I don't know how much it's going to have an impact as regards leaving the feeder out there, you know, um, but we'll only find that out once we get fishing. So, the issues and information about this spot. Basically, I've been told that um, it could be hard today. You know, it didn't fish well yesterday. But I have actually also been told that this is the best pole peg on this section. I'm obviously not fishing the pole, but I am going to feed a line at 13 metres. I'm going to put some balls of ground bait in there at the start and then fish a feeder over the top of that so that's at 13 meters and then my main feeder line is going to be straight in front at 48 meters i found a spot over there that feels quite clear michael buckwalder kindly told me that it's very snaggy here very snaggy so much so that you know you want to look for a nice clear spot to fish and if you do hook any fish stand up to play them so I'm hoping it's not going to be as bad as that, as drastic as that, but because of that, I know that lots of the lads that fish here, and certainly this section here, going through through any skilling, that when you're faced with snaggy pegs, they don't leave the feeder out there long. It's a nice, busy approach. And so that's really what I'm going to start on. I'm going to start on not too negative. I'm going to, I'm going to start fishing active, so I'm not leaving the feeder in there long. Just keep dropping the feeder in, dropping the feeder in, but not piling loads of bait in unless I start catching, and then I can feed to the bites. So, yeah, whatever happens it's going to be a very interesting day and i just thought i'd share this with you just to give you a taste of what it's like out here in ireland in a competition like this and what sort of fishing we're doing but like i say i will be up updating you with progress um, throughout the week and it's all about weight so it's cumulative weight over the five days so that's the great thing about a competition like this you know even if you have a bad monday tuesday even wednesday sometimes you can draw fantastic pegs on Thursday or Friday and you're right back in it again. And that's the beauty of weight competition. So this is, I'm hoping, not going to be over till the fat lady sings. It's going to be a very interesting week. And if you want to be kept up to date with how we're progressing through this, with all the news and that sort of thing, and all our future matches, hit subscribe. And I look forward to checking in with you later on.